In this video I will show you a good amount of tips and tricks for Factorio, so beginners and advanced player will find something for them. What's more, I made a timestamp in video description to make finding information easier for you when you come back to this video after some time. I also ask you to write comment how many tips did you already knew and what is your playtime in Factorio? I'm curious. Hello, my name is Trupen and if you want to know even more about Factorio, there is a red subscribe button to increase your knowledge. Don't be afraid to click that. And now let's go to the game. If you forgot to turn off Biter expansion in Word Generator at an enemy tab, you can still do it with a comment. Press tilde and pass this to the console and confirm with enter to disable expansion. All necessary comments will be included in video description for your maximum comfort. Cliffs are annoying and can be disabled in Word creation, like Biter's expansion, or in case that you want to destroy them on current save, you can still use this comment. And to prevent those sons of a biscuits from generating on new chunks, use that script. Also, everything is in video description to increase user experience. Timelapse in Factorio can be easily made from any save if you turn it on recall to replay information in advanced settings during word creation. People who play their very first game can also look how unique uh, their base was. I can make video about timelapse in Factorio if you want, because setting this up for the first time is a bit tricky and will take too much time for this video, but you can prepare some save for future timelapse now. Alt is your friend, it will show you every important information what are you looking for in your factory. Some people don't like having this option always turned on, but even they should use it from time to time, because amount of data provided from this is huge. Like you can see, boiler don't use call at this point, red bar stays still, although moment ago it was burning. That's because boilers made already small buffer in steam, and without power consumption it will stay like that. This is not a Minecraft where coal burn even without items to smelt. It also works the same way in furnaces, cars or trains. Button Q works like pipette tool from Photoshop. It will pick items from your inventory, use it to build the current selected entity and place them in your cursor. So just put mouse on building, press Q and machine will appear in your hand. To make machine disappear, click Q one more time on normal ground. It's hard to mine big amount of stones for furnaces at the beginning of the game, so to make start easier you should look for rocks, because those are good source of protein. A stone, stone, a good source of stone. What's more, huge rocks contains also coal for early game fueling. To direct feed your machines with resources, you have to first pick those resources and then hover over your buildings and press Z to drop only one item at the time. It's very useful to feed your furnaces and drills with coal at the very beginning of your journey, when fuel is worth more than gold. There is no point to drill big amount of stone or copper at the very start, because iron is the most important resource to craft more drills and to push your progress forward. You should start mining copper when you got enough iron to begin with power and science. Barter miners are very effective at the beginning, so place them as many as you can to speed up your slow start. When you decided to switch for electric miners, it's still a good idea to keep old burner drills on coal path to maximize your coal production. You are the only assembling machine before automation research, and you should take advantage of it by always crafting something. It doesn't matter what, because everything will be useful. Ok, maybe not everything. But crafted gears will help you with making drills, and pipes decrease crafting speed for boilers and steam engine, so it's good to have some ingredients for later. It's good idea to put 4 miners on stone like this, to prevent yourself from running out of stone. In the beginning, stone is only necessary for furnaces, so this small mining area will be enough in our case. You can use assembling machines like this to craft ingredients like gears or copper wires, to make crafting advanced machines easier. If you decided to hand feed those machines, they will take almost no place, so you can put even more of them to maximize your crafting speed. If your neighbors already hates you for your no eco-friendly factory, you can use pipes to build a wall between. Walls are hard to get at this point of the game, so it will be a smart way to defend yourself from native citizen of this planet in this way. 
To see how your power production is going on, you have to click on the power pole somewhere in your base with left click. It will open your window with all necessary information about power in your base. On the left is production and on the right is consumption. Don't mess this up. You can have two completely different items on the same belt. For example, here is a belt with coal and iron at the same time to make smelting area more compact. It's also smart to have mixed belts in your mall where space is important. In case you don't know what mall is, I'm already rushing to the explanation. Mall is a production district designed for most things you might need in the game. Assemblers, belts, inserters, signals, roboports, power poles, substation, you know, lots of things. It is faster to grab assembling machine or miner from the chest than crafting them in your hands. This is a well-designed mall from the internet. Your can be less beauty, but it will still fullify his role. It's very hard to put every single science pack on one belt to supply science lab. This is why I'm showing you this complicated design for feeding your labs from one side. It uses four belts full of science and it's easy to upgrade with just one wipe of upgrade planner. Blueprints are in the description. Maybe you was wondering why I wanted to fit labs only from one side. This is the answer. You can loop in labs with inserters between them. Inserter will take only one necessary pack to make whole system efficient. Easy trick and amazing to use. Splitters have few mods and filters. You can open them with your left click and choose mode you like to use. Important input from one side or other. Output Focus it on one side or filter itself to remove unwanted item from your life. I told you that belts have two sides and this is very easy trick to connect two belts with different ingredients into one mixed belt for later use. In bigger factory you need bigger power plant and to build reliable source of steam electricity you have to follow factorial ratios. For steam power it is one offshore pump, 20 boilers and 40 steam engines. If your factory is still a little toddler, you can use less boilers and engines with later upgrade in mind. Green circuits have ratio 3 copper wires and 2 green circuits. So to maximize your output production, I recommend you to use this direct feeding layout for your factory. Factorio is a smart game and it can do complicated things like replacing old belts to undergrounds or splitters instead of you to keep you lazy. I mean, to keep you a boss and don't overwork you in your own factory. Undergrounds will delay old belts between and splitters will simply remove one belt. It's good to know that this trick also works for underground pipes. Still need a lot of time to smelt and also good amount of iron. It might be shocking for you, but ratio between iron and steel is one to one. That's mean you can directly feed your steel furnaces with iron like that. Different tiles in Factorio gives you a different bonuses to speed. You can tile all your factory to increase your overall speed or build a weird walking path and live in a cult like Order of the Path. To put more tiles at the same time use plus from your numeric keyboard or make a blueprint and use bots for this boring job. You can put power poles at maximum distance by pressing left mouse button and running. It is also possible to use this trick in a car or train. Power poles has different connection distance, but it works for everything. Some people say that trees are the true enemies in Factorio. I'm not here to judge anyone, but if you want to destroy, crash or annihilate those trees, you can use grenade to speed this up. This method will be more effective with damage upgrade on your weapons. It is easy to import any blueprint from the web and pretend how smart you are. But stealing those files will be like taking somebody else's work in the school or copying and pasting the whole code from Stack Overflow. Yes, everybody knows you are doing this. In my opinion, new player should avoid blueprints from the internet and learn from his own mistakes or from videos like this. By the way, are you still counting how many tips did you know? If no, then come back to the beginning of this video. P button will show you how your production and consumption is going. You can look at different stats like items, fluids, buildings, pollution and kills in this window. It's more like interesting fact than useful mechanic, but maybe you'll find a good application for this. 
cables from circuit network can be connected to storage tanks and show you the whole amount of your liquids. It is important to connect this cable to some power pole to have full view of your storage. It is possible to connect multiple fluids with one cable, so be creative with your raffinery. You can make a dedicated spot for some items in your inventory with press and scroll button. I myself always keep spot for my personal bots. This advice also works for inventory in train, so you can make special train with dedicated spots for important items. Radar will scan 29 by 29 chunks around himself, revealing new sector of the map every 33.333 seconds. You can see a progress bar when you hover a radar. 29 by 29 chunks is a big amount and it will take 7 hours to discover that area by single radar, so it's good idea to place more than one. The best idea to put radar is to keep them in 40 by 40 chunks grid, because it will allow you to see map in a better way. When you open a map with M and zoom in to area with radar near that place, you can see everything what is going on, and also place some blueprints. To comparison, this is a map without radar. Different is huge in mega bases. Map is also useful to look at the range of the radar when you are placing them. Everybody loves trains, and you know what is better than regular trains? Faster trains. To make trains faster, just put better fuel inside and look how fast your life is going. Nuclear fuel will increase train top speed by 115% and acceleration by 250%, so upgrade will be plain to see. If you get this achievement too many times and your train started to be on killing spree, then you should start looking at the map to see when train is going. Just make yourself a habit that every time you run across rails, you look at the map and your life will be wonderful. When you left click a train, it will open you his inventory. From here you can change color of your locomotive. It's good to keep trains color organized, because then you will know what train has run over you. You will also get information about cargo by just looking at the locomotive. You can use internet to find best matching colors for your trains. With already opened train inventory, you can give a train your own direction by pressing CTRL and left click to choose spot where train should stop. Or when you press shift and left click, it will choose only train stops for his destiny. It's safer method than driving by yourself, because in this case other trains will respect you and your path. There are two types of people in Factorio. Half of the group is wrong, but I'm not gonna say you which one. If you want to teach your trains how to go backward, just put another locomotive headed second direction and voila! The best idea for train output and input is station with stack inserters and chests, because this setup can reload train in a few seconds, instead of minutes. One stack inserter can grab even 12 items at the same time. At the other hand, fast inserter can grab only 3 items, so stack inserter are 4 times faster. I forgot to say, but better fuel also works for cars and tanks. With this in mind, go and make your friends a flattened pancakes. I'm joking, use this for Planet Citizen. It's good to always research something, because this will be always helpful in a long run. What's more, your bottlenecks will reveal every lack of resources, and with this knowledge in mind, you should repair those mistakes and upgrade your factory. At this point you should have assembling machines tier 3 and to replace your old slow assemblers just put new ones directly on them. It also works for furnaces and inserters. Or just upgrade everything with bots, it will be even faster. Nukes are very powerful weapon and can be used to serve democracy. You can also use them to clear big areas from trees. It is expensive method but very satisfying. Making holes in your logistic network is a stupid idea and you should avoid it. You can see how sad are those bots when you enter that dead spot. Bacons consume power constant no matter how many buildings are in the range, so to keep your electricity bills low consider putting them only when they boost other machines, not the air, because faster air have no benefits to your health. Productivity modules are making something from nothing, brilliant idea and even more brilliant is to use them in a rocket silos. 
resources to launch a rocket are very expensive and with 4 productivity models at tier 3, cost per rocket will decrease by 40%. Yes, 40%, it's almost half of the required items. You can also use those models on labs or normal machines, but rocket is the most effective. However, crafting speed will be decreased, so bacons with speed modules should equalize that speed. If two toolbars is not enough for you, there is a setting to increase the number to even four. You can make every toolbar for different duty. It can also contain building from complicated mods. Nuclear reactors have bonuses to productivity when they are close to each other. So cheeseburn pattern isn't the best way to organize your cute atomic plant. Like you can see, this reactor has 400 bonus to heating from his neighbors. It's hard to feed him with a fuel, but 300 is still a good bonus. You can press escape and find the save button in the middle of your screen. If you are still here, that means you might forgot about this little detail like sleeping or making breaks. But if you like this, I can make even more videos like this with bigger amount of tips, if you want. Because I already have notes for like 50 or maybe 100 more tips. Just leave me a sign that this content is helpful for you by subscribing, liking and sharing this video with your friends. And I hope that you didn't forget about comment with numbers of tips what you already knew. Now it's time to share it. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.